take roll? Certainly. Uh, Vern Willie? Here. Gary Lorenz? City of Ankeny, David Jones? City of Bondurant, Kurt Sullivan? City of Carlisle, Ruth Randleman? Here. City of Clive, Ted Weaver? Thought I saw him on. I thought I did too. Uh, City of Cumming, Brent Highfill? Here. Thank you. Uh, Dallas County, Mark Hansen? Present. Uh, Dart, Elizabeth Prosciutti? I saw her on too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Carl Voss? He was on. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah, I believe I'm uh, uh, Frank um, County's alternate today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Connie Bozen? Chris Coleman? Uh, City of Des Moines, Bill Gray? Here. City of Elkhart, Colton Fors? City of Grimes, Jake Anderson? Here. City of Indianola, Ryan Waller? City of Johnston, Jim Evans? Madison County, Tom Leners? Here. City of Mitchellville, Tammy Dillavu. City of Norwalk, Stephanie Riva. Here. Uh, let's see. I think Sarah said she was unable to be here from Pleasant Hill. Is Mark Conrad on the phone? Okay. City of Polk City, Jeff Walters. Here. Polk County, Matt McCoy. City of Urbandale, Robert Andewig. I'm here. City of Van Meter, Kyle Michael. Warren County, Aaron DeCook. City of Waukee, Courtney Clark. City of West Des Moines, Laura Ravellis. Here. Oh, killing your name. Uh, City of West Des Moines, Jamie uh, Letzrig. Tom Haddon is here. Okay, Tom, thank you. Um, City of Windsor Heights, uh, Dave Burgess. Joseph Jones is here. Thank you very much. And um, Scott Brennan. Present. Kevin Foley from Des Moines Airport. I'm here. Darla Huggaboom. Andy Lunen. Here. Anyone else participating that I did not call? Hey Tracy, this is Brooke Ramsey. Hi Brooke. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Item number three is vote on the approval of the agenda. Move, Willie. Moved by Willie and second, Stephanie. Second by Stephanie. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Item number four is vote approval of the meeting minutes. Uh, for May 21st, 2020. So moved, Ruth. Second, Walters. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion passes. 
Item number six is vote of the approval financial statement. Uh, item number five, that's for Todd. Sorry, I needed to unmute myself there. Um, not a lot of uh, transactions this month. Uh, a lot of the, our normal stuff, uh, rent, um, payroll, that type of stuff. I'd recommend approval. All Happy. right, any questions for Todd? This so is moved. a voting item. Second, Bird. Stephanie. Second by Stephanie. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion passes. Item number six, uh, this is the public comment part of the meeting on any MPO items. Is there anybody from the public wanting to speak? I hear none. We'll move on to item number seven. Uh, it's a presentation from the Iowa Department of Transportation, Andy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm glad that we're here to do this prior to the uh, approving of the TIP. However, we had meant to do this earlier, but uh, Scott Dockstetter had retired and then COVID hit. So we're back to you guys now. Um, uh, showing you the picture here of one of the bigger projects, but just kind of to start. Um, next slide, Dylan. So District 1 encompasses 12 counties in central Iowa. Um, you got, um, and we have um, a construction office in Des Moines and four metro shops. Um, in metro shops, we have about 85 employees um, with about 60 trucks, and we maintain about 1,300, 1,400 miles of roadway, um, lane miles. So quite a bit of uh, work going on with that side of it. So district staff, we don't have a district engineer at the moment. We have Tony Gustafson, who is our previous assistant acting as the interim, and he's uh, doing a pretty good job. I don't really have a answer on when they may um, get that hiring going. I'm just kind of waiting. I think they're waiting for post COVID just to make sure that all that stuff's taken care of. And I think they're testing to see how Tony does along the way. Um, we have a new construction engineer, Scott Nixon. He is from uh, our Creston RCE and was a Union County engineer for a while. So we're pretty happy to have him on board. And Ben Hucker is our uh, construction engineer in Grimes. Next slide, please. So I'll talk about the ongoing projects, the one here. I'm gonna have a few drone shots. Um, we started getting into the drone recording on our projects last year. We have a couple of people that are flight uh, approved and, and they've been doing that. This is uh, Iowa 415 and 66th, uh, Northwest 66th, where we took out the interchange and put in an at grade intersection with signals. Um, that work is should be done right now. I th there's probably out there doing a little bit of work, but it's open to the traffic. Uh, next slide. This is our uh, I-35, I-80 interchange at 141. You guys have probably in the Metro have all seen this. A lot of work going on. The picture down to the left is a, is a little bit old. Um, I think they have some paving on Meredith and things like that, but it's showing the half diamond at Meredith and then a little bit of that uh, uh, flyover ramp. Um, this project is slated to be done um, at the end of this year and you know, with the 100th Street in improvement, um, it's going to be about a $60 million total for the whole project and it'll increase capacity from 86th down to Douglas and also include those uh, loop ramp, or excuse me, get rid of those loop ramp and uh, get the new flyover ramp. Next slide, Dylan. Then this one, I'm kind of over in that area, but this is a Iowa 17 uh, pavement um, rehabilitation, uh, mill off some and fill it back with asphalt. Um, if you guys try to go up that way, it's a pilot car right now. So um, with a flagger, so you 
expect some delay, but it's a $4.5 million project that's going on this year. Next slide, Dylan. This is the I-3580 bridge over the Des Moines River. Uh, I took this picture. I was down there fishing with my cousin, so I thought it was kind of a good idea to get a pic while I was there. But the concept here is we went through to do maintenance on the bridge deck joints and um, keeping traffic open to three lanes in each direction wasn't feasible or safe. So we're kind of doing the uh, build a little more extra bridge so we can phase that and then we'll be set up for the future on those long term bridges there as well. But it's a, a $18 million project and it's over three years so they'll be working on it. They started last year working this year and a full year next year as well. We do have the trail closure underneath that. Um, so we had had done a, a detour last year kind of got the flooding issue, but I think we've got that taken care of. And I haven't heard any issues with, uh, you know, the trail being closed and too many people getting upset with that. Uh, next slide, please. This project is ongoing right now with uh, Second Avenue paving. Uh, that's from Euclid uh, up to Ankeny, almost, uh, or to 72nd place in Ankeny. Um, Three and a half million dollar project. It includes ADA ramp, um, improvements and a new service along that roadway. Um, next slide, Dylan. This is our project over in Ankeny on I-35, uh, capacity improvement to I-35 and upgrade interchange at First Street to a Virgin Diamond interchange. So from 36th Street um, south will be six lanes. And with this project, uh, we're adding an additional um, auxiliary lane between first and or labor. Um, picture there at the bottom, it's just a little bit old, but uh, you know, that old uh, southbound roadway has been pulled out and it looks to be, to me, like the grade is in fairly good condition. So I know they had some setbacks with some COVID, but uh, it looks like they're on schedule and everything's going well there. Next slide, please. So those are the projects, the bigger projects that we have going on now. Uh, you know, there may be some, you know, uh, smaller resurfacings or some, um, you know, patching and things like that that I didn't spell out particularly, but I do get into that for the future projects. So um, these are the projects that just got put out in the, the new uh, updated program. And again, the uh, 3580, 235 interchange is being funded. Uh, the Two phases of this have already taken place with the 54th Avenue Bridge um, reconstruction and the Delaware Avenue Bridge reconstruction. Those were needed to make it, uh, make those bridges wide enough to fit in the new footprint of the interstate. So check my number here, but those projects, uh, I believe 23 and 24 funding and um, just a second. I wasn't keeping up with my numbers there, but yeah, uh, so 23 and 24 funding, that's a $77 million project with 23, um, two, 2023 million, or excuse me, 2023 um, year and 41 million, and uh, in 2024, 17 million for paving and lights and the signage there. And then next slide will show us the ultimate, um, what we have for long-term um, plan here. I don't, I, I guess I don't, we don't have any funding for anything beyond what I just talked about. However, um, you know, I think we're taking the Minneapolis ramp and getting those other, uh, the uh, eastbound to south or eastbound to 235 um, ramp taken care of is, is uh, probably the number ones there. So that's why we're kind of piecemealing this together. We, we know that we have a lot of unmet needs and we're not able to do all of this one interchange at one time. So we're kind of uh, taking it as we can. Next slide, please. This is a newer project and this is gonna be capacity improvements on 80 from the Mixmaster over to the 65 bypass. That would be given four lanes in each direction there and a new bridge over the interstate at Northeast 38th Street. 
this is about a $30 million project. And, uh, you know, with the bottlenecks and things out there um, on a daily basis, it, it's, it's really needed. And you can see the photo at the bottom there. I just happened to go to Google Earth to try to look at this and you can see all the traffic backed up in the eastbound direction. That's because there was a crash up there. So, you know, just one simple crash, one car can make it back up for miles. So we understand we need to do that. Um, I'm, I'm glad that our commission has moved this up in our, uh, in our plan a little bit because, you know, we just make sure, we just have to make sure that they keep knowing that what we need out here. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a US 69 widening. I, I know I've talked to you guys about this before, but uh, currently that's a two lane roadway, one of the higher volume two lane roadways in the state. Uh, it was, had some project funding, I think back in uh, 2000 or the late 1900s. And uh, um, we had a big funding cut and this was one of those that got pulled, um, finally got it back in to uh, grade and pave in 21 and you know, come back and with some erosion control after that. Next slide kind of gives a depiction of what that is, but it'll be a two lane in each direction with turn lanes and medians in the middle. Uh, we've had a little bit of, you know, trying to work to get people that, you know, similar access to what they have um, while maintaining, you know, a good corridor. So took some work and, uh, you know, working, working it out with neighbors and getting to where we are now, but we're in the process of buying property and you know working towards that project next year. Uh, this is a resurfacing project that came in. It's on I-35, kind of between Or Labor and 54th, just north of 54th. We have some pavement issues out there, and we've been, uh, you know, through this project and the 235 project, we've been moving traffic back and forth on this, and milling and filling, and and uh, you know, grinding off lines and things like that. We also have an issue with the railroad uh, bridge abutments and uh, those things popping on us sometimes. So this is gonna help fix all that and give a nice smooth surface out there south of the uh, First Street project. This is uh, Merle Hay Road and Douglas Avenue um, resurfacings. Merle Hay is a resurfacing, um, milling and filling putting a new roadway down with ADA upgrades. Uh, Douglas Avenue will be a resurfacing and a section of that um, at the city's request is gonna be going through a road diet. Um, I think it's that section from 28. I, I don't know for sure, I'd have to get out the detail, but it's, it's the section from uh, basically uh, Martin Luther King or Beaver, excuse me, Beaver over to Merle Hay. And we're waiting on some striping plans for that. Don't know for sure if that'll include, uh, you know, bike lanes and parking, but uh, I know the city's working on that to get that. So um, good project. And that is a 2021 project. So that'll be next year. Next slide, Dylan. This is a project of Iowa 28 over the um, Raccoon River. This is the existing bridge from when Iowa 28 was a two lane roadway. So we built the new lanes and that was the northbound lane bridge that's new. So this bridge needs to be replaced. Um, working with the city on that, I, I pushed to get a trail added there. So now there'll be accommodations. I know the city had in their both cities and you know in your guys' uh, long range bike plan, uh, plan trails, this was one that was in there. So really no better time to do it now. I, I know it's a cost, but we've been getting into the complete streets a lot more. And, you know, I just, when you guys have a planned trail, it's something that I try to push to get in. So this is a $7 million project in 2022. Next slide, Dylan. This project, uh, the bridge was just added. It will be in a 2025 year, but the uh, Maury US 69 uh, intersection improvements that's like a million dollar project. We're uh, working with the city on that. However, since the bridge got included, I, Tony's thinking now that maybe, you know, we don't really want to hold off on Maury, but it'd sure be nice to uh, incorporate those two projects together. I think we'd get a better price and probably, you know, you could incorporate 
the uh, project from the river up to Maury Street then instead of having two separate. Um, so we'll be, you know, working with the city moving forward on that, but they're both in the program. Um, and 2025, I don't know if there's any, um, you know, leeway to, to move that up or not, but it's something we can definitely work towards. Um, next slide, please. This was a small project. It kind of came up uh, at the local level. We had ramp, um, the southbound ramp there backing up on the main line. And um, we put a, a 300,000 in with the DOT. We got some, uh, some U-step money and the city put some in, designed it. And that's just gonna basically put a little more pavement out there to lengthen up those uh, turn lanes that are there. So a small project, but I think it's going to be a good safety project. Next page. This is just a standard uh, bridge deck overlay on uh, 65 bypass there. Don't pay attention to what that little window says. It says on I-35, which I don't quite understand our processes there. But um, And this is just, um, you know, they'll close it down one direction. And uh, if not, they may be able to... Uh, scoot traffic through the ramps there, I don't know for sure. Um, but a, a million, $1.7 million uh, bridge deck overlay, just to maintain those and keep them in good working order. Next slide. This project is I-3580 at Hickman. We've talked about this interchange. The IJR has been approved. We finally have got money. Um, total project estimated is just shy of $60 million. Um, the, the commission put in $27.9 million um, in 2025, and we're anticipating getting the rest of that money needed in 2026. Um, you know, it's not a given, but when they commit the funding, um, you know, for half of it, they're, they're going to stay with it. Um, so this, this project is reconstructing the interchange to a divergent diamond interchange and also providing capacity to the interstate from Douglas to University. So with this project, including with the uh, um, urban loop corner up there, we'll, we'll have an extra lane in each direction from 86th down to Douglas, or excuse me, down to uh, University when this project is done. So in 2028, we'll get out there to the point where we'll be able to handle that traffic out there a lot better. Next slide. This is a local project that um, the DOT is partnering with them on. They they have a, a intersection um, yeah, capacity problems there at 128th and Hickman Road. Uh, it's about a six million dollar project. The department does putting in about 500,000. Uh, we got uh, 500,000 from the traffic safety improvement program. You guys, I think they got uh, 700,000 STVG from you guys, and um, we got a, a 1.4 mil or 1.14 million in ICAP grant. So uh, this is going to add um, dual left turns in, in all directions there at that intersection, and it will provide for uh, three full lanes on Hickman uh, from the interstate out to this intersection. So it's going to upgrade the uh, traffic signals and it's going to put in raised medians. So next project, please. This is a project we just talked about last month, but um, it's spelled out in the new program with approximately $35 million spread out between 2023 and 2025 to rebuild the Union Pacific Railroad bridges and add mainline capacity um, between Grand Prairie Parkway and Jordan Creek Parkway. Next slide. This project, I don't know if we've talked a whole lot about this one with you guys, but um, I, I think I reviewed it last year when we did, I, I don't know for sure, but um, I-141, the 121st Street going up to Jester Park, we have some serious crash problems there. Um, I don't think there's been fatalities very recently. However, quite a few severe crashes and a lot of near misses from what we understand. 
So the project that we've laid out and went through public comment and um, went through a couple of iterations here, but basically gonna um, circle drive 121st, not allow traffic to come to 141 from the north and put in that new um, north connector. So everyone would uh, utilize the interchange to get, um, to get to and from 415. We've had a little bit of uh, public um, discrepancy or outcry from those folks that are along the new frontage road, um, kind of south of, well, on the west side of the road, fairly newer homes and, and uh, you know, really didn't envision this new road come through there. So um, it's still in our program for 2025, um, grading and paving about 8.2 million, but, um, you know, we're just trying to keep pushing it along. Um, you know, in the project, we had a couple other alternatives. One was a traffic signal. Um, really don't know for sure if that's gonna work and don't really wanna find out the hard way being a safety problem because of the increase and then decrease of, of uh, speed. So those are things that we haven't done typically on our, met, on our uh, divided highways is add in a, a signal. However, to the south of this, you know, those signals are, you know, getting up by the golf course also. So um, I think we're gonna be keeping this revisited and, and uh, working with Johnston and Grimes on an access control agreement to the south. So that, you know, might, might change how this comes out. I don't know for sure. Um, next slide, please. This project kind is, uh, Iowa 415 and Northwest Beaver Drive on the west side of the Mile Long Bridge. Um, we took a couple of options out there, whether to put in a signal, whether to put in a roundabout, or whether to just pave some additional pavement on the far side of the intersection. That's what we've decided to do, a pretty low cost treatment. Um, so what this will allow to do is two two people to go straight through the intersection. Basically, instead of one at a time, they'll be able to go two at a time. Now, they are gonna to have to play nice with a little bit of a zipper merge at the end of that, but um, we think, you know, definitely that this is gonna increase and, you know, if, if not quite double the capacity going through there. So should help out in those peak times because in the non-peak hours, there is really no issue here. So, uh, next slide, please. This is uh, Iowa 141 and the uh, Iowa 141 bridges over the uh, Iowa 44. And this is a bridge deck um, overlays, 1.1 million in 2024. Bridges are just getting old and they just need to have a new surface put on them. Next slide, please. This is I-35 six laning. Um, we do have the project from 36th Street up to Iowa 210 fully funded um, in 22, 23, 24. And uh, let me see, I think we got the initial, yeah, I have my right paper up. Yeah, and then in uh, 25, we got the grading and paving of 62 million. So we have approximately, um, you know, 100 and 110 million dollars appro approved for this project, and and nothing north of 210 yet. Kind of a tight budget out there. Next page, Dylan. Thanks. So there's a couple projects there, smaller ones, but uh, on I-235, we're going to be doing some uh, barrier rail reconstruction, landscaping. And uh, we have a huge project in 2025 to uh, like a three and a half million dollar bridge painting project. To print, print, uh, excuse me, uh, paint those bridges there, 6th, East 9th, East 12th, and US 69. So that's pretty big. Um, we got another on 80 doing some more barrier rail. And then uh, a, uh, on I-80, a, nor a Northwest 72nd bridge over, um, excuse me, interstate bridge over Northwest 72nd, just do some pre bridge rehabilitation on those projects. So the, the table down at the bottom kind of shows the yearly breakout of 
on you know all the projects that we've talked about um, totaling you know through the course of the program 416 million in the metro area next slide is getting into uh, what we don't have funding program for um, we've talked about this but we're you know unprogrammed and we know that we need to do some work out here at the uh, southwest mix and we have um, Howard R. Green and um, in the process of coming up with some you know float testing and trying to get some alternatives that we could move forward in an IJR process similar to what we did at the northeast mix um, but we're still not quite there yet and definitely not ready to to, to put that out and review that with the public yet just because we don't really know what we're doing trying to figure out how to phase that construction you know without you know damaging traffic flow next slide and the next slide is kind of also unfunded and it's something that has been going on in the background for over a year now but it's the icm integrated corridor management and We've had several um, meetings on this. We've had a lot of workshops. We've had, you know, bringing in various uh, folks, you know, um, you know, local traffic city engineers, uh, DOT, MPO, DART, um, uh, emergency services, and all of those folks um, to just to, to really get the, all the background information ready and and done so we can start working towards what you know how we would fund this in the future and um, we do have a, a summer um, we're supposed to be pushing out our mid to long term strategy report and that's something that when we get to that point i'll want to you know have either the consultant or or maybe dylan and i you know review some more in depth with you guys on this but we have a few early wins out of that process that um, we are trying to move forward and early wins mostly just because uh, low cost. Um, we're looking at uh, I-80 um, sliding median barrier between the uh, uh, Northeast Mix Master and US 65. We heard from the, uh, um, in the emergency services that, that if they were able to get around in that area because it's a, it's an unbroken median that, that would really help out and and you know help to you know get rid of some of those bottlenecks and things there we have uh, q spillback um, at or labor i-35 where it's backing up on the main line a similar thing at ml king where at you know peak hour times traffic backs up on the main line and then on merle hay road working on a signal optimization for regional that was something I think that was already going on, but we're able to tap into that and, and uh, help them out a little bit too. So as we continue, we're gonna you know work towards how are we gonna fund some of these things, and that's when we're gonna we'll be coming back to you guys. But uh, um, we're we're proposing to set up a couple committees, one exec committee, you know, with city managers, DOT, MPO, and DART. Um, they'll be you know, making decisions and scoping, um, you know, and funding where funding's coming from and uh, how to, you know, committing agency resources and, you know, trying to work on those interagency agreements that will take place. And then a tech committee meeting or a technical committee that, uh, you know, will be those traffic engineers and uh, uh, city engineers and folks with the DOT and operations and, MPO and also DART, you know, trying to help develop, uh, evaluate uh, project proposals and identify any new or modified ICM strategies. So we're not anywhere near being done. I think we still have a, a, a good year left in this process. So um, it's kind of hard to come to you with the background information because I feel like all I have is a couple of pieces and not kind of the full program. But when I get to that point, I want to come back and give you guys a little more information on this. So that's that's all the projects that I had to talk about. Do Are there any questions? You're on mute, Joe. You're on mute. Can't hear you, Joe. 
Sorry about that. Yep. Thank you, Andy. You're um, any questions for Andy? All right, let's move on to item number eight. Chirosi, uh report and vote on draft uh, FYI 2021-2024 transportation improvement program. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, uh, as you all know, the uh, MPO is required to develop a transportation improvement program for the region, which uh, basically includes all federally funded transportation projects for the next four federal fiscal years. And so the MPO has been working on uh, developing the TIP um, for the last uh, few months, we reached out to the MPO member communities and received feedback on uh, all projects within their communities that have received federal funding. And um, after receiving input, um, the draft plan was developed and it is now available on the MPO website for uh, public comment. Um, so uh, the um, draft document um, was also submitted to the Iowa DOT for comment. At this time, we are uh, receiving any feedback, comments, input, corrections that uh, anybody might have so that uh, we can incorporate that into the final document, which will be uh, submitted to the DOT on July 15, 2020. Um, we have also scheduled an online public meeting and um, that uh, meeting is, is on June 24th at 5 p.m. and the login information is up on the website for uh, anybody that might be interested in joining in and, uh, and asking any questions or giving us any feedback. Um, so uh, it, that's what I have for you right now. Uh, if you have any questions about the draft tip, I'll be happy to answer at this time. Otherwise, uh, we are seeking approval of the draft tip document. Thank Thanks, you. Roshi. Any questions? All right, this is a voting item. Entertain a motion. Don't move, Miss Ruth. Second, Stephanie. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Item number nine is report and vote on FYI, FY 2020 2023 TIP amendment request. Shirosi. Yes, thank you. Um, so the item before you is an amendment request to the current tip, which is the federal fiscal year 2020 through 2023. The amendment request is from the Des Moines area regional transit. And essentially the amendment request includes um, a handful of uh, budget adjustments, as well as uh, new funding uh, for the uh, new operations and maintenance facility. So the, uh, the detailed uh, breakout of the funding adjustments was uh, included in your agenda packet, which you may have seen. But um, in, uh, in summary, uh, what's happening is that we are adjusting uh, some of the funding between the various um, uh, uh, DART program elements that have received federal funding. Uh, the new operations and maintenance facility also received a federal grant, and uh, in, or, in order to, and for that we have we are uh, basically updating the total project amount and the corresponding local match. So um, uh, that's uh, in a nutshell. That's the. Uh, summary of the amendment request. The uh, adjustments um, have been approved by the DART uh, Commission earlier this month, and uh, now we are uh, seeking approval of the uh, MPO committee uh, to incorporate the changes into the, into, the tip, into the TIP document. So with that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Otherwise, uh, we are seeking approval of the amendment. Thank you. Any questions? All right, this is a voting item. Move approval, Haddon. Is there a second? Second, Stephanie. Great, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Item number 10 is report and vote on the excess surface transportation block grant funding policy. Uh, Todd. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, we had uh, some questions on what we did with excess uh, STBG funds uh, from last year. And uh, the executive committee asked staff to develop a policy related to that and how we would uh, decide when to uh, distribute excess funds. So we drafted the policy that was included in your packet. Uh, some of the kind of major items of that is once um, staff uh, works out that there's um, excess funding of $250,000 or more, we would bring that to the um, committees to decide how they want to move forward with that. Um, the excess funding cycle would run concurrently with the normal STBG cycle. Uh, we'd have an online application similar to what we do with the regular cycle. Um, the policy was shared with the funding committee and our, and our technical committee. Um, we made some minor changes based on their comments. It was approved by exec uh, earlier this month. We would recommend approval. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Todd? All right, this is a voting item. Move to approve. This is Ruth. Thanks, Second, Ruth. Walters. Walters. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion passes. Um, item number 11, it's a report and optional vote, fiscal year 2021 unified planning work program and budget amendment. Dylan. Thank you. This is an amendment to amend or to amend the budget that we approved just this last month uh, that will go into effect at the end of this month. Um, when we did the budget, we failed to put in there um, the University Avenue corridor project. And this is a project that the cities of West Des Moines and Clive are doing with SDBG funds provided by the MPO last year. Um, and essentially, we just need to put it in the budget so that those communities can be reimbursed for their project costs. Uh, the project itself is um, a $350,000 uh, project, I believe, a $325,000 project. They have $100,000 of STBG funds. Um, on the screen is a map of just the area that's being studied, and it's looking at a few, very, few different things of just how to redevelop that area. Um, but among them is how to reconfigure the transportation network. That's why it received STBG funds. So this doesn't do anything else for the MPO's budget. We're not getting extra funds for the MPO itself. Any funds we get are just going to be uh, passed through onto those two communities uh, for their share of the project. Um, so with that, we recommend approval of this so that they can expend funds and be reimbursed. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks, Dylan. Any questions for Dylan? Move Willie. Second, Coleman. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Item number 12 is mobilizing tomorrow amendment. Zach, report. Uh, you may recall that after the approval of the long range plan mobilizing tomorrow, the executive committee requested that we do an amendment to the plan to include a list of illustrative projects. So staff has developed the list of illustrative projects. That list was reviewed by uh, the committees a month or so ago. And since that time, staff has put the list into an appendix that includes tables that have the project details along with maps that show the location of the projects, and then some description of what illustrative projects are and it's kind of what the process is for illustrative projects and then how those projects would make it into the plan if they received funding. So that uh, document was sent out, the appendix was sent out uh, with the agenda packet and it's available for you to review. Um, staff is in the process of getting the public review period started. Um, early next week, that post will be made um, and we'll be collecting public comment probably through beginning of August um, at this point. Um, once uh, we do the public comment period, we'll bring back the 
appendix for your approval at the August committee meetings. And uh, once it's approved, we'll insert it into the plan. Um, if you have any questions about the appendix or the Illustra projects in general, I'd be happy to take those questions at this time. Any questions for Zach? Okay. Item number 13 is a report on the Transload facility update. Just want to give you a quick update on where we're at with the Transload facility, um, the environmental assessment. Um, the, the, uh, the document has, we just found out the other day, has been uh, cleared for signatures. So right now it's going through their signature process. Um, as soon as that's completed, we'll be able to send it out for public uh, comment. Um, so we're anticipating that according to what FRA is telling us, we'll be able to uh, make that announcement and put it out for public comment sometime next week. Um, so about a week ahead of uh, schedule. So that's uh, good news. Um, other than that, we've got the, uh, the grant agreement that we're finalizing. Uh, FRA has reviewed that. They had some comments for us. We worked through those comments and sent them a final draft of that grant agreement back. So that's going to go through their final approval. Um, once that's finished, uh, we can, uh, you know, sit on that until the um, EA public comment period is done. And this is a reminder that public comment period is going to last for 30 days once we release it. Um, the FRA is letting us work on the finding of no significant impact, which is what we're anticipating the EA will be. Uh, so it's called a FONSI. And uh, they're gonna allow us to develop that in concurrence with the public comment period. So that ideally, as soon as that public comment period is over, we can uh, move forward with the, uh, move forward with the, the grant agreement and get that signed and not have to have any delay with the to get finalized. Uh, next slide, Dylan. So this is the uh, quick schedule of what, uh, what we have moving forward. This is the schedule that will be going into the grant agreement. Um, a few things that still have to happen before we can finalize that grant agreement. The final design has to be approved. The EA, the EA has to go through the public comment period. Um, once those things are done, the grant agreement can be signed. And then uh, we're anticipating that that grant agreement will probably be finalized sometime in uh, September. And then as far as construction goes, according to the schedule we have right now, um, construction could start as soon as October 31st, 2020. Um, if, if that happens, it most likely will be mostly just some groundwork um, this year. And then the, the big stuff can start happening early in 2021 as soon as the, the weather clears. So that's kind of the basic schedule and a basic update on the Transload facility. If you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to take them. Thanks, Zach. Any questions for Zach? All right, item 14 is a report on the Purple Heart Highway update, Todd. Yeah, thank you. Uh, HNTV, our consultant, uh, they're currently working on updating um, on the traffic information on the study, working with us on um, some modeling um, updates and the DOT. Uh, we're scheduling a coordination meeting uh, with the DOT and HNTB uh, either for later um, this month, early next month, and um, uh, making uh, good progress on updating the report so we can move forward with the discussion. i uh, be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Todd. Any questions? All right, item 15 is a report on the water trails update, Todd. Yeah, thank you. Um, progress is continuing to be made on this. Um, a lot of design work's being uh, finalized, uh, getting up to 10% uh, completion on, on the uh, Scott Street Dam, as well as the, the uh, three um, uh, Prospect Park, Birdland and, and Harriet Street locations. Uh, we received um, from SHPO approval, uh, conceptual approval of uh, the proposed dam modifications, uh, uh, likely, uh, meaning they will likely have no adverse effect. That's big in, in the SHPO Historical Preservation Office world. Um, also finished our, our NEPA public meeting a couple of weeks ago, uh, received uh, roughly 200 comments uh, about the project, mostly in support of the project. There was a few uh, negative comments as well. 
uh, working with the Corps on the Prospect Park area that's, um, they uh, own that land. Um, um, so we have to work with, through the Corps on that and we're going through their process. Um, COVID had a little impact on our schedule, but um, the consultants are still working forward. We are asking our congressional delegation to work uh, uh, with the, on the DOT, the US DOT on getting us a grant extension. Uh, this is uh, not only us, but other uh, agencies that received build grants uh, would like a, a little additional time on, on these grants so we don't have to have such a tight schedule. Um, kicked off the governance discussion with the uh, consulting group and, and Scott Racker of the Ray Center. They're starting to look at those issues. Uh, Mayor Gear mentioned at exec that uh, West Des Moines is fin near finishing one of their projects. Uh, uh, their boathouse project is nearing completion and they also have created a portage from, from the lake area over to the river uh, that's already open and they hope to have the boathouse open uh, um, about a week actually. So, um, great to see these regional projects starting to, to pop open. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks for the update, Todd. Any questions? Item number 16. 16 is a report by uh, Dylan, legislative updates. Thank you. As the current transportation bill starts to wind down in its timeline, there are efforts to pass the next res, uh, next transportation authorization. A couple of weeks ago, the House uh, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee unveiled their INVEST Act. This would be the next transportation bill. Um, it is a pretty substantial increase, about 46% uh, greater than what we see now in terms of the money that would go to the Highway Trust Fund. It's uh, about four, a little over 400 billion over five years. Um, I have out there on the screen a couple, there's a lot of stuff in this bill, but here's a few of the things that stood out. Um, they have some money for COVID relief. This would go directly to cities, um, transit authorities, and so forth in the first year of the bill. Uh, the bill takes a strong emphasis on maintaining and fix it first versus expansion, as well as emphasis on additional funding for bridges, um, multimodal safety for, so complete streets and safety for bicyclists and pedestrians as well as greenhouse gas. Um, there's also, I don't have it on the screen, but some connection, um, a new program that would help better connect housing and transit and transportation in general. Uh, specific to MPOs, uh, there would be a new requirement that MPOs would have to do a infrastructure vulnerability assessment. And this is part of a new emphasis on resiliency and emergency evaluation. Um, there would be a new pilot program, and this is something that the MPO helped um, helped get introduced and um, we lobbied Senator Ernst for this and she helped uh, support it but it's a new uh, metro performance program and they would select a certain number of MPOs to participate in this over the course of the FAST or the INVEST Act and there would new, be a new um, performance measure on accessibility so as you know the MPO has certain performance measures we have to track and accessibility would be a new one of those. Um, so this is now just in the house Transportation Infrastructure Committee. Uh, yesterday they started markup of, of the bill and there's over 200 amendments that are still being fleshed out. So this is a long way from being done, but at this point in time, this is what we know. And it seems like a pretty decent bill if it were to go forward as it's laid out. So that's what I have for you right now. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Any questions or comments for Dylan? Thanks Dylan. Item 17 is a report of upcoming events. Gunner. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, there continues to be not a whole lot happening in the event space, but I do have two updates for you. One is that the video for Greg Schill, our last speaker, is on the website. I am posting that in the chat box. If anyone wants to check out that link, you can uh, you know, watch the video there. He was a really fantastic speaker. The other thing is just a note to say that we are um, starting to re-engage with the speaker series committee and start thinking about more events um, now that we're kind of settling into this new normal. Um, I'm guessing the next one will probably be virtual again, though, uh, like I said, we're just start restarting those conversations. Uh, that's it in terms of upcoming events. Uh, I believe, though, Todd won me to hear uh, the annual report at this time as well. Uh, Dylan, if you'll show, share the screen real quick with me, that would be great. Um, as this group knows, there's been a lot of progress made in the past year, a lot of hard work done. 
Uh, and so we're uh, sharing with you the uh, 2020 annual report to really highlight the work of the last year. Um, and we hope illustrate the value that the MPO brings to its member governments. Um, Gunnar, if I knew how to share the screen with you, I would do it. Um, well, perhaps you just want to pull up your browser and go to our site backslash 2020 annual report. I'll put the URL in here. Uh, this is going to be pushed out more broadly to our stakeholders, uh, likely sometime next week in conjunction with some other announcements um, as part of our metropolitan planning briefing. Uh, but we wanted to give uh, this group a, a first peek at it um, so you're able to, so you know it's coming. And it is live on our website right now, um, but we'll be publicizing that more starting next week. All right. Anything else, Gunner? Anything for Gunner? Unless you have any questions before we go. All right. Item number 18 is other non action items interest to the committee. Anybody have anything? Just a reminder that we don't have policy meeting next month. Yes, sir. Our next uh, meeting date is August 20th, 2020 at 4 p.m. If nobody has anything else to add, um, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy, if you just want to email me those documents, I'll sign them. <laughs>